Hello, Sparkian. This is Kings LeGrant from, ha from Happier Marriage Secrets, where we are on a mission to make marriages happier again. And today we're discussing um, this, this shocking truth about the impact of divorce on not only on the divorcees, but also on others connected to them. In this case, those connected to Jeezy and Ginny Maya in their divorce proceeding. Before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. Those seemingly small acts are huge in that they help this channel to grow. And for those who have already done so, a big thank you. This topic is a second in the five hard truths that I shared in a longer form video, which you'll see here on the screen. And you can also find the link in the description below. In that video, I spoke of five hard truths about Jeezy and Ginny Maya's divorce that could save your marriage. And so I wanted to um, create a standalone video for each of those five hard truths. And so this is a second of the five hard truths. So let's get to it. The impact of divorce on individuals and others around them. The impact of divorce. Divorce today is almost like, oh, okay, we just get divorced. And people throw that word around so easily. They just don't think about it. It's almost like, okay, you know, I think in the Bible, the Bible, you know, there was a time where Jesus was asked this question, you know, about divorce and when should people get divorced? Because at the time, people were divorcing for everything. You know, a wife burns a husband, stows, or the husband, you know, it was a male dominant society. So the man was the one who was always seeking divorce anyway. So, you know, she couldn't do right. If she did anything that he recognized that she did wrong, divorce. And so it was a it was a problem in, in the days of Jesus. And he was asked this question. He was also asked this question about divorce. And he gave the answer that he said divorce was not something that was from the beginning. Moses gave the the, the writ or the, the, the license or the permission to divorce, but it was not God's intention. God, when, when he said to get married, he said for life or death. When you get married, it's life or death. When you die, then you may seek remarriage. But marriage was for was until death do us part. I think we made marriage so easy today. They have this thing called no fault divorce. I mean, you can just divorce for any reason. That is one of the, our problems in our society. One of the problems in our society, we make divorce so easy. I, I wish it was so hard. You know, I was speaking to someone that um, from the Philippines who said, in the Philippines, they made divorce so hard. You don't divorce. When you get married, you stay married. You work it out. Now, I'm not saying you should always stay in a marriage if there's abuse and, you know, physical abuse occurring. No. And unfortunately, there's extremes on both sides. Some people say you should always remain married. I don't um, I subscribe to that idea. I don't think God also subscribed to the idea because he hates um, abuse when there's physical abuse. He speaks about that in the Old Testament. So God is not for that either. But God hates divorce because of what it does to the individuals involved and others around them. Divorce can cause great pain. If you've ever been divorced, you know what I'm talking about. It's suffering and pain, both emotionally and financially. And it's most studies have shown where the wife, the woman is the one who suffers even greater from a divorce because she is in a financially less, um, in a financial situation where she is suffers more from a divorce than the husband does. Now, I know there's always exceptions to everything. But typically, that's what happens. So it can have a negative impact on children, and I'll share about that in a few minutes, and extended family members and friends. And so it's it's a, it's a disease. It's like a cancer type of thing where it just permeates everything around it. So that's why God hates it. He hates what divorce does to people and their lives and their families and to, you know, it upends everything. And that's why he warns against that. And I know I'm preaching here, but I'm just passionate about this. You know, divorce, does it happen? Is it an option? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to say here and say somehow it should never, ever, ever happen. So please don't hear me saying that. But the reason why God hates it because of what it does, the pain it caused. And God, when he sees his, his creation suffering because of divorce, it hurts his heart. 
because that's not what he intended. That's not what he wants for you or for me, for anybody, for, for J, uh, Jeezy or Jeannie Maya. That's not what God wanted. But unfortunately, because what Jesus said, the reason why divorce occurs, here's his answer. He says, because of the hardness of someone's heart. Someone's heart have become hardened. And that's why I recommend that if you're going through a very, very difficult time, seek professional help, but seek the right professional help. Someone who will be truthful to both of you and not take sides, who's on the side of the relationship, not on one side or the other, but on the relationship side, and who will be truthful and honest and help you to understand that, you know, let's probably look at other options rather than divorce. I believe divorce is, is an option, but it's an option that people want to reach out because they feel there's nothing else. They feel hopeless. They feel helpless. They feel like this is the only thing they have left. My friend is not, really not. I have, you know, in my work as a counselor and as a relationship coach, I can tell you, I have seen people come back from the brink of divorce and today are living happy lives. Studies have shown that people who have divorced, five years after divorce, majority of those people regretted having divorced. They wish they have stayed in the marriage that they have. So seeking support from loved ones and professionals is very important. So here's what I do you know, as, a, as a counselor, a marriage and, and licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified relationship coach. I don't coach people or, or counsel people to divorce. I will counsel and coach them through a divorce that they have initiated on their own I can counsel with them through the pain and how to normalize and get their lives back on track, but I don't counsel for divorce or coach for divorce or to divorce. I will coach or counsel through it. Once that they have made that decision and have divorced, then I can, of course, because God, you know, he hates divorce, but he always, always love a person, a divorcee. He always loves them the same way. He does not love them less because they've divorced. And there's hope after divorce. And I want to mention that point. So what do you think about what you just heard? Let me know in the comments below. Secondly, if you would like to gauge the state of your marriage and see what you can do to make it better, then take the Happier Marriage Assessment um, quiz that you can find at happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz. Lastly, if you are into podcasts, you can also access topics like this one, and a host of others at happiermarriagesecrets.com slash podcasts. All these links I just mentioned will be found in the description that follows this video. With that said, God bless and make sure you subscribe and click the notification, notification bell so that you get notified of third hard truth and all the new videos that are posted on this channel. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you next time. God bless.